Smash like and subscribe as Fabrizio Romano gives us all the lowdown coming out of Stamford Bridge. Chelsea's first transfer window of the Toad Bowley era has been eventful. Last season's marquee signing Romelu Lukaku was shipped out on loan. Antonio Rudiger and Andreas Christensen bid adieu as free agents. And according to Thomas Tuchel, we have a lot of players who are thinking about leaving. On the bright side, Raheem Sterling and Khalidou Koulibaly are done deals and other big names are being linked to the London club, none more so than Jules Koundé. I'm joined by Fabrizio Romano, our resident transfer guru, to discuss the good, the bad, the ongoing with the Blues transfer business. Kegolasso begins right now. Today's Kegolasso episode is presented by Gillette Clear Gel Antiperspirant. And for those of you who don't like to sweat, the choice is clear. Gillette is your ticket to all-day freshness. Gillette. The best a man can get. CTA nominate Kegel Asso for the best podcast category in the People's Choice Awards. It only takes 60 seconds out of your day. Go to the link in the description, or if you're watching this on YouTube, scan the QR code in the top corner and then toggle down to the sports category and select Kegel Asso. All right, now time to get on with the show. Fab, delighted to have you back with me. How are you doing, my friend? I understand hey, that you friend. just had a very important phone call. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. All good. Thank you. Thank you again, as always. Thank you to all the guys sending questions. And yes, it's, a, it's an important day. It's an important Monday, especially for Jules Kunde. So ready to update you on, on many things happening right now. Fantastic. Well, fill us in. So, guys, uh, for Jules Kunde, the latest I have is that Barcelona are really getting closer to, to signing him. The deal is progressing well. They have an agreement on personal terms for Jules Kunde. So now the player gave the final green light to Barcelona uh, after positive indications on Sunday. Today, they reached an agreement on, on the personal terms. Now it's up to Barcelona to send an official proposal to Sevilla and to reach full agreement with Sevilla. But we saw that it was pretty um, fast when it happened with, uh, uh, with Rafinha. No? So it was kind of similar situation. They had an agreement with the player and they were waiting to reach an agreement with Leeds. But they were really fast in reaching an agreement after sending the official proposal. And this is the hope internally at Barcelona to do basically the same with Sevilla. Let me say that Sevilla insists that the only proposal they received is from Chelsea as of today. So we will see what happens on, uh, on Barcelona side and when they will send this official final bid. But they have an agreement with the player. And what I can confirm is that also Chelsea are not happy with the current situation. They're getting tired of waiting because they're waiting since last Wednesday or Thursday to receive a green light from Kunde and Sevilla on £55 million pounds bid and on five-year deal offered to Joel Kunde. So still no green light from Kunde. And so if Chelsea will not get this green light today or tomorrow, they will be prepared to leave the deal and to focus on other centre-backs. They are already exploring some potential alternatives. So they are not in advanced talks with any other player yet because they are still focused on Kunde and hoping for Kunde, but they are getting tired. And so this Kunde saga is moving to the end. So soon we will know where he will play, but Barcelona are leading the race now. What, in your opinion, has changed since Kunde being, you know, on the verge of joining Chelsea uh, a few months ago to now sort of almost leaning more towards Barcelona? I think uh, Barca did a great pressure on the player, great pressure thanks to Xavi also, because financially Barca needed to wait a bit to be able to, to jump into this Conte opportunity. And so the timing was really important for them to wait and wait and wait on player side while he had this discussion with Chelsea. There is a big difference between Kunde and Rafinha, that Rafinha never wanted to discuss personal terms with Chelsea. So it was only some email to send proposals, but it was not even a negotiation between Rafinha and Chelsea. In this case, Kunde discussed personal terms with Chelsea, had the discussions on the details, on the contract, on the salary. And so this is why Chelsea were really optimistic and waiting to receive the final green light to have the player in London last weekend and then to have medical and sign the contract maybe today. But it did not happen because Kunde is still waiting. And Xavi, I think, has been a key factor in this story again because he called the player. He had direct contact with the player. Xavi is really pushing for Kunde as the perfect centre-back also because uh, Barcelona, two names in the list, two main names in the list were Koulibaly and, uh, and Kunde. Koulibaly joined Chelsea. And so for Barca, it was really important to try until the end for Kunde as they were the two priorities. And so... I think this has been a really key factor for the situation we are right now. Let's repeat that it's not yet a done deal with Barcelona, but now they have an agreement with the player and they hope to be able to complete the deal with Sevilla. As you can see at the bottom of the screen, we've got a few questions coming in on whether Sevilla actually could be in a position to reject the Barca bid. What's your understanding on uh, on that topic? 
Honestly, I don't know because they insist they have not received this bid yet. So I will be able to tell you once they will receive the proposal and what kind of proposal we receive is important to understand because from Barcelona, they insist that they are not going to match the proposal made by Chelsea. They always say that it's too important for Barcelona, that proposal. And so this is why they are not going with the same amount, but with different kind of structure of the deal. So we will see. We will see what the Sevilla will do. Let me say that with Leeds was basically the same when they discussed about Rafinha. I'm always doing this comparison because it seems really the same kind of story. But also Leeds always say we want to sell the player to Chelsea. We have an agreement with Chelsea with very good conditions. And at the end, Barcelona were able to find an agreement with Leeds. So the feeling is that Barcelona are leading the race, but they need to find an agreement with Sevilla. So Sevilla are an important factor in this story. And we will see what happens today and tomorrow because now it will be time for Barca to make a proposal to Sevilla. Yeah, not the news that Bordeaux were hoping to hear because of their sell-on uh, fee in the, the Koundé deal, which would obviously be decreased uh, if Barcelona were not to match the, the Chelsea bid. So let's, uh, let's, let's turn our attention to the choices, clear presented by Gillette Clear Gel uh, on this Koundé saga, Barcelona or Chelsea. Fab, where would you go if you were in Koundé's boots? Uh, good question. I think with Chelsea, it's really kind of unlucky deal. Let's see how it will end up, but really unlucky because this story between Kunde and Chelsea started last summer. It was end of June last summer, summer 2021, and they were really close to sign Kunde. Then they wanted to include players, Zuma, Emerson Palmieri, no agreement with Sevilla. Then they tried again offering 60 million end of August, no agreement with Sevilla. Then on deadline day, Chelsea were trying again last summer, deadline day of August 2021, no agreement with Sevilla. And then trying again in February, March, to reach an agreement with the player. It was almost done on player side, but then Marina left the club. We know about the sanctions, everything changed at Chelsea. So really, really a lucky story between Chelsea and Kunde. And I think, um, honestly, for, for the player, Premier League football is an amazing opportunity because for a centre-back, you have the chance to grow up against the best strikers in the world. But also Barcelona feeling right now is that they are building something special. So I think that the choice is very good also if Kunde is joining Barcelona because they are building something important with Lewandowski, with Rafinha, in this case Kunde if they will be able to complete the deal, but also with uh, other players like Kessie, Christensen, and it's not over yet. So I think the feeling around Barcelona, thanks to Xavi, Xavi is the man who changed everything. The atmosphere in the dressing room on the transfer market is different. And so why, this is why I think that Barca could be a very, very good choice for him. Well, obviously, Chelsea's choice between Kunde and, uh, and and Kimpembe was clear. I mean, who are the, the the sort of backup options for Chelsea if Kunde does eventually choose Barca uh, over Stamford Bridge? Kimpembe, as you mentioned, has always been a player appreciated by Chelsea, and he's still in the list. But it's another complicated negotiation because Paris Saint Germain are asking for 65, 70 million euros and Chelsea are willing to offer 50 million euros. So at the moment, still no agreement between clubs. It's been discussed, but I don't see Paris Saint-Germain accepting 50 in this case. So let's keep it in the list, but they will need to change the proposal or it will be it will be complicated. Milan Skriniar is a player who's always been appreciated by Thomas Tuchel, but same, Inter missed out on, on Gleison Bremer. So they don't have, at the moment, the replacement for Skriniar. And this is why they will insist on receiving 70, 70 million, 75 million euros for Skriniar or nothing. Also because their mission is to keep Skriniar. They want to keep Skriniar and to extend this contract. Inter insists to keep the player also because Paris Saint-Germain are working since long time on Skriniar, but still no agreement with the club. So also Skriniar is not an easy one. It's like a domino. I think it's like a domino. We have to wait a bit and see and see what happens because as of today, they are still hoping for uh, the green light on Kunde. But if they will not get this green light today or tomorrow, I think they will start concrete negotiations also with other targets. Looking at this current situation at the moment, are you surprised that the, the, the club opted to sell Tomori to AC Milan when they knew the contractual situation of some of those players? I think they were not trusting Tomori 100%. Uh, maybe they were not expecting Tomori to be at this level as he's showing with AC Milan. So to answer your question, I think it's been a mistake because Ficayo Tomori is by far one of the best centre-backs we have here in Serie A. If not the best in the last season, he's been simply incredible. And I still think that he would be he will be one of the best center backs in Europe very soon because he's a fantastic fantastic player so also not to include a, buy, a buyback option has been a mistake by Chelsea and we have to say congrats to AC Milan because they did a fantastic business in January window and it's really complicated to sign this kind of players in January so 
So yes, I think Tomori was kind of perfect player for uh, for Chelsea, but for Milan this summer is untouchable. And let me add that AC Milan are negotiating to extend this contract. Eh? They are in negotiation for a five-year deal with Tomori and super happy Milano. So at the moment, I think his comeback is more than unlikely. And there was some suggestions as well of a late uh, effort from Chelsea to to land Mukiele, who, as you revealed, is is very close to joining PSG. Uh, you know, was there ever any truth in that that, that Chelsea made that last ditch e- effort? It's true that they had some calls. Yes, it's true that they had some calls during the weekend to explore the possibility to jump into the deal, to to hijack the deal. And it's not new for Chelsea because they tried to do the same with Richarlison, uh, with with Tottenham. So they they like to jump into deals at the last minute, but it was not a lucky one because I'm told that Paris Saint-Germain are really close to sign Mukiele. They have a full agreement with Leipzig. With Leipzig. We have full agreement. They have full agreement also on player side. So they're just waiting to sign paperwork today or tomorrow and then to, to have everything done and official with, with Mukiele. So from what I'm told, it's Paris Saint-Germain. Let's see if Chelsea will try again. But it was something that happened on Saturday night, on Sunday morning. But at the moment, the answer I'm receiving is Paris Saint-Germain absolutely in control of the situation. All right, well, let's move away from Kunde and the defensive situation and have a look at Thomas Tuchel because after the, the Arsenal defeats, he said this, I saw a team in Arsenal who are mentally committed to a level of exhaustion that we could not match physically and mentally because we have a lot of players who are thinking about leaving and looking at their options. Who do you think that Tuchel is referring to here, Fab? Ah, this is a good question. They have many, many players that need to clarify the situation. Many, really, like Aspilicueta. Uh, Aspilicueta wants Barcelona move, but at the moment, uh, with this complicated situation between Barcelona and Chelsea, it's not going to be an easy one. Marcos Alonso, he's desperate to leave the club and to go back to Spain, to Barcelona also in this case, but still no agreement between clubs. And then they have to clarify the situation with the midfielders. Jorginho, out of contract next summer. Uh, Golo Kante, important player, but out of contract next summer. So what they want to do if they want to extend the contract and stay at Chelsea or maybe it's better to find different kind of solution but for Kunde uh, sorry for uh, Kante they are still uh, discussing on a new deal so there are many players who need to clarify the future Akin Ziyech is another then Bachuai played during the pre-season tour but of course he's not part of Chelsea plans so they have many many players who need to decide their future as soon as possible to, to clarify everything so this is why for Chelsea it's not an easy moment. I understand Thomas Tuchel, honestly. He's really nervous, but you can understand him. They have so many players, so many situations to clarify, uh, new signings to, to complete as soon as possible. Uh, they are now rebuilding the club with a new owner. They need a new board because Marina and Peter Cech are out now. And so they need to rebuild also the board of the club. So it's not easy. It's not an easy summer for Chelsea. But I think Sterling and Koulibaly are two fantastic signings. In fact, from Koulibaly in the preseason game was very good. Also with Arsenal, he played few minutes but was very good Sterling top player and so let's give Chelsea some time because I'm sure that they will back Thomas Tuchel in the best way they can do all right well before we go to a quick break I'm just going to throw a couple of user questions at you first one we have from at Mikhail Pedersen 2 he says will De Jong ever consider Chelsea if he can't stay at Barcelona have Chelsea looked at a right wing back backup for Reese James at all I think the the, the right wing backup for for James is a is a possibility, but it's not a priority. The priority is the centre backs. They need to clarify as soon as possible with the centre backs because they only have Thiago Silva, and uh, and Koulibaly, and of course Levy Colwell. But they need to clarify if he's staying at the club or maybe leaving if they sign new centre backs. And um, the other question was about sorry, I uh, it was about uh, Frankie De Jong. Ah, Frankie. Yes, for Frankie at the moment, there is an interest from Chelsea, but there is not a negotiation. Eh? There is not a negotiation. The only negotiation, official negotiation at the moment is with Man United. But Frankie wants to stay at Barcelona. So I think, and I'm told that Chelsea will not submit any proposal for Frankie de Jong until they know that maybe Frankie is going to change his mind. But at the moment, he's still on the same position. He wants to continue with Barca. All right. And then the other question from at Eswith. Uh, it's after the Rafinha miss and based on Tuchel's comments, who are the forward targets for Chelsea in the coming month? Ah, good question, this one too, because uh, we know that they've been offered the chance to sign Cristiano Ronaldo. It's something that Jorge Mendes discussed with Chelsea, but Thomas Tuchel said no like 10, 15 days ago. He didn't want to proceed on this Cristiano Ronaldo opportunity. So I'm sure that Mendes will insist again with Chelsea, with Bayern, with Atletico Madrid till the end of the market. But at the moment, he's still, he's still like this. It's really difficult to understand because Chelsea are really... Trust me, guys, focusing on the centre-back situation. They need to be fast because they know that Domino is now pretty clear on the centre-backs. Many players are going to other clubs 
and so they need to be fast. They wanted the league, and the league is at Bayern. Uh, they wanted Kunde, and now Barcelona are getting closer. So they need the timing on the centre backs is really important. And maybe the strikers domino with Man United. Let's see what happens with Ronaldo, with Cristiano to take part of it, but also other clubs in Italy, in Spain, in England. The strikers domino could maybe restart in August, and so for Chelsea could be an opportunity. All right, fantastic stuff, Fab. Well, we'll take a quick break and then we'll join you for some more Fabrizio Romano goodness. When you're looking at a game that already doesn't have a lot of black women and then you see Brianna Scurry and you're just like, this is strange, but I'm liking it. And she's dominating. We're not turning back. Oh, the soccer calendar knows no break, so it's always all systems go here on Kier Godasso. Staying on top of the global game is an all-day gig. And then there's the added stress of being a helplessly loyal fan who obsesses over every minor detail concerning my club, Aston Villa. Throw in on top of that the studio lights, the public speaking, the breaking news, and it's a recipe for perspiration, but not for yours truly. Fortunately for me, sweat and bad odors are two things I never have to worry about. And thanks to the long lasting power of Gillette Clear Gel Antiperspirant, I can get on with my day, which mainly involves staying on top of the latest Villa news and telling myself that it's strictly for work purposes without even breaking a sweat. Gillette Clear Gel Antiperspirant goes on with an anti-white mark and protects your nostrils from those nasty under armpit smells while giving you 72 hour sweat protection. And if you want all day freshness, the choice is clear. Gillette Clear Gel Antiperspirant is a tap in. Call to arms people, get your Gillette Clear Gel Antiperspirant at a store near you. Welcome back, Fab. Right, we'll get straight into it. We've got a bunch of different names to, to explore. We've got Ziesch, Aspidiqueta, Marcos Alonso, Timo Werner, Christian Pulisic, Engoro Conte, Callum Hudson Odoi. We've discussed some of those already so let's try and narrow the list down a little bit let's look at the likes of Ziesch, uh, as Piliqueta, Timo Werner who was of course linked with uh, Leipzig over the weekend uh, and Pudasic. Yes for Werner I think if they will receive some proposal Chelsea will be open to letting go and to find another solution so at the moment for Werner they are still waiting waiting and waiting to understand if they will receive something that could make the player happy. Ziyech is not key player for Thomas Tuchel, so they are prepared to let him go. They know since May that for, uh, for Ziyech at Chelsea, time is almost over, then it doesn't mean that he's out of the project. So if he will stay, they are prepared to use him as part of the rotation, but he's not a key player. And so this is why for Ziyech they are waiting also on bids. As Milan uh, are really interested in Ziyech, but at their own conditions, on loan, not signing the player on a permanent deal. So let's see if Chelsea will open up on this kind of deal or not. Aspiliqueta, he has a proposal in his hands from Barcelona. It's a two-year contract with an option for further season. Aspiliqueta would love to join Barcelona, but he's more than respectful. He is a real professional. He loves Chelsea, and so he's never going to create any problem or to force the situation. So it's up to Chelsea. If they can find an agreement with Barca, Aspiliqueta will be happy to join Barcelona. If not, he will be the best professional. He will stay at Chelsea for the final year of his contract, and then he will probably join Barca next summer. Marcos Alonso, he wants to join uh, Barcelona too, or leave Chelsea because he wants to go back to Spain. He needs to go back to Spain. It's also because of personal reasons. And so many, many things to clarify at Chelsea right now. For Hudson Odoi, at the moment, nothing going on, nothing imminent. And I think that Chelsea will need to clarify on new signings before deciding on Hudson Odoi, how many players they will have in that position. But this is a situation at the moment I think is really important to Chelsea, for Chelsea to be fast this week and next week on centre-backs so they can focus on other targets too. And what about Pulisic? Yeah, so Pulisic is basically the same. Uh, it's always the same situation. He's waiting to, to understand if Chelsea will sign new players in his position or not. At the moment, he's not a player that Thomas Tuchel considers out of the contract, he, uh, out of the project, sorry. He's still part of the project. He's still appreciated by the manager. But Pulisic wants to feel important. Timo Werner wants to feel important. Ziyech wants to feel important. So they will need to make some decision on these players. And at the moment, I'm told that Ziyech is the most likely to leave the club this summer. And same for Timo Werner if they will receive some proposal. For Pulisic, they are not desperate to sell him or offload him. Well, on the topic of Pulisic, is there any update on uh, Slonina or Matt Miazga? Yes, for, for Miazga, they are open to letting go. Whenever they will receive a proposal, he's not part of the plans. And for Zlonina, they have an agreement. They have an agreement ready with a uh, with player, an agreement on personal terms. Chicago Fire are waiting since two weeks for Chelsea to sign an official proposal and to complete this negotiation. So Zlonina has an agreement with Chelsea, five-year deal. Chicago Fire uh, have been told that Chelsea will send this proposal for 10 million plus 
uh, add-ons to complete the negotiation. But we know that Chelsea are now busy with center backs, are now busy with important stuff. Lina is a really talented player, but it's for the future. And so this is why Chelsea have now different priorities. And then they will make a final step on Oslo Nina if other clubs will not jump into this one because it's still an open race. And we've got a number of returning loanees. We already touched on this topic last week, but is there any update uh, on the situation with Armando Broya, uh, given the interest that's been shown in him so far? No, at the moment, no, because Skamaka is going to be the new West Ham striker. So because of Chelsea waiting and waiting and waiting to decide on Broya, they didn't want to accept this permanent deal proposal, £30 million from West Ham, because Thomas Tuchel is a big fan and is convinced that Broya will be an important player for the future of the club. So this is why, at the moment, uh, the player is still waiting to understand what Chelsea will decide, but he's not going to West Ham because West Ham are signing Skamaka. He will be in London tonight to become new new West Ham player. And so let's see now if Chelsea will decide to negotiate with other clubs, maybe to try to find a loan deal for Broya because the player wants to play. He wants to feel important, but he wants a permanent deal move. And so let's see. Let's see for Broya because now for West Ham, it's Skamaka, but other clubs have always been keen. Everton, Newcastle. And so this week and next week, be important to understand more on Armand. Yeah, you mentioned Everton. You've got the likes of Billy Gilmore on this list as well. Connor Gallagher, Emerson, Ethan Ampadu, uh, even Mishi Batshuayi. Any uh, updates on those guys? Well, no, at the moment, it's still nothing imminent. For Emerson Palmieri, there is something in Italy because Italian clubs always appreciate him. But at the moment, he's still part of the rotation for Tuchel. So I'm not sure that he's going to leave. Depends on Marco Salonso situation. And for the other names you mentioned, it's true that Everton are interested in Gilmour, but he's still not agreed with, with Chelsea. For Gallagher, Tuchel is a big fan, so he wants to uh, check again the player in the pre-season tour and then in the coming weeks and then to decide maybe in August on this boy if it's the case for him to go on loan or not. So the situation is pretty quiet around these players and for Ampadu, I think he will have a chance to go on loan again after a good season with Venezia. All right, fantastic, Fab. I always feel enriched when we've had our discussion. So final thoughts, any stories you're keeping your eye on for this coming week? And the one of Skamaka, honestly, Skamaka and Kostic, because I think West Ham will be pretty busy. They submitted a proposal for Onana and let's see if they will reach an agreement for this midfielder. For Skamaka tonight, the player will be in London to sign the contract, 36 million euros plus add-ons for this deal completed for Gianluca Skamaka. And then Philip Kostic from Eintracht, they submitted a proposal to Eintracht last week and now they're discussing. They're going to discuss tomorrow and on Wednesday personal terms with Kostic. So David Moyes is moving and West Ham will be pretty busy, I think, this week on the transfer market. All right, guys, thanks so much for listening to Fab and I on Kegola. So please take a minute to nominate us for the best sports podcast in the People's Choice Podcast Awards. Link in the description. We're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, anywhere that you listen to your podcasts. We're also available as video. So sub, ah, subscribe to us on YouTube. Come and visit us there, Fab. Thank you so much. It's been an thank absolute you. pleasure. Thank you as always, and see you soon here on Kegolasso.